2016, 2nd January, and I think we should make one YouTube per day in this new year. So today we'll be approaching chest injuries. You see, chest is formed by the rib cage, and if this is the vertebral body. Here is the neural canal. Here are the transverse processes, the lamina, and the spinous process. Then the rib is attached to the body, the transverse process, and goes round like this. Right up to the sternum. So basically, the rib moves on this axis, and since it is directed downwards, when it moves like this, the anteroposterior diameter of the chest increases. Anteroposterior diameter of the chest increases. Rib is downward, so as it moves like this, the anteroposterior diameter increases, and this type of movement is called as the pump handle movement. The lower six ribs move like this. Whereas <clears throat> the upper ribs move like a bucket handle, so they are attached to the vertebra here, they are attached to the sternum here, and they would move up like this, increasing the transverse diameter of the chest, increasing the transverse diameter of the chest. Therefore, the principle to immobilize the ribs is. That if you tie the lower six ribs, the pump handle movement would stop, and as the bucket handle movement occurs after the pump handle movement, this bucket handle movement occurs after the pump handle movement. Therefore, this will also stop. Therefore, if you want to stop the ribs from moving too much, in case of fractures. In case of fractures, then you stop the pump handle by tying the lower six ribs by strapping the lower six ribs in expiration. And if the bucket, if the pump handle movement of the lower six ribs stops, the bucket handle movement of the upper six ribs will also stop. And so, even if there's a fracture of the second rib. You have to strap the lower six rib. This principle is called as the Dale's method of strapping. This is the Dale's method of strapping. So now, let us approach a situation. The situation is that the Eid and the holy festivals. People meet each other, and the grasp may be too strong, and the ribs may be osteoporotic, so they crack. <coughs> so, when the rib cracks, the rib may fracture at one place. So there is a soft tissue over this. So the person complains of pain here. Now the pain can be because of this soft tissue, injury to the soft tissue, or injury to the rib. The method to distinguish between it is 
that if you press on the sternum, if you press on the sternum, this there will be a spring. There will be a springing action on this rib. There will be a springing action on this rib. The fracture will move and there will be tenderness here. You are pressing here and there's tenderness here. This is called as indirect tenderness and this test is called as the spring test and this is diagnostic of a rib fracture. The second important thing to realize is that if there is a double fracture, if there is a double fracture, then this whole fragment of the rib would become free. It will move in during inspiration and will move out during expiration. And what will happen, we will study later. But it will move paradoxical to the rest of the chest. In inspiration, it moves in when the rest of the chest wall is moving out. In expiration, it moves out when the rest of the chest wall is moving in. So this is paradoxical movement of a flail chest segment. Flail segment of the chest in which one rib must, must break at at least two spaces, two places to allow it to become flail. So these are the two things you must understand in anatomy of the chest wall before we start approaching a case of chest injuries. So now, now Somebody has had a chest injury, either because the chest has been compressed, trampled or hit by a blunt object or by a sharp object. And so there may be a penetrating chest injury or there may be a blunt chest injury, there may be a direct chest injury or there may be an indirect chest injury. And basically the patient person is presenting with pain. But along with pain, you have to be careful to find out whether there is breathlessness whether there is shock or whether there is visceral injury Now with pain, you have to distinguish between a contusion, which means a soft tissue injury, or a fracture rib. The method to distinguish between these two, I have already told you, is the springing test. Then let us approach breathless. Why should a patient be breathless? in case of a rib injury. So here, we draw this person draw the trachea draw the bronchi draw the lungs Draw the diaphragm, draw the chest wall, and draw the pleura. Draw the pleura. The pleural cavity. Then we also draw the heart. We draw the heart, we draw the stomach and the esophagus here, we draw the liver here, and we draw the spleen here. 
no supposing a person is breathless either there is obstruction respiratory tract obstruction and this respiratory tract obstruction is basically because the tongue the tongue here has fallen back and if you pull the jaw forward the obstruction is usually released another reason of obstruction can be that a person has vomited or there's something in the mouth and this has been aspirated so these are the two important reasons of obstruction the physical sign of obstruction is that the expiration is prolonged expiration is prolonged which we call as harsh vesicular breathing or there are ronchi or sounds so there are inspiratory sounds if the obstruction is proximal and there are expiratory sounds if the obstruction is distal the major reason of obstruction is that if this is the bronchus there is a hole in this bronchus and there is peri bronchial leak of air there is peri bronchial leak of air this air also goes into the mediastinum and comes here into the suprasternal space of burn where you should feel for crepitus so this condition is called as peri bronchial emphysema and to take the pressure off the peri bronchial region you may have to put a negative suction drain in the suprasternal space of burn so this is cause of respiratory tract obstruction which can be within the lumen in the wall some allergy or bronchospasm or outside the wall which we call as peri bronchial emphysema the second thing can be that the there can be multiple lacerations in the lung because of shock waves so this happens when the person is in a submarine and because of a depth charge there is explosion so there can be multiple lacerations in the lung which can lead to edema that means fluid in the lung and this can lead to crepitus on auscultation and breathlessness the third thing that can cause breathlessness is intra pleural space occupying lesion which we call as ipsol now in the ipsol there can either be air when it is called as pneumothorax or there can be blood which we call as hemothorax or there can be even pus later on which we call as empyema m p y e m a so whenever there is usually there is in the acute injury there is air in the pleural cavity and this pneumothorax pneumothorax can be when the air enters can enter and can leave both then you call it as open pneumothorax when it can neither enter neither enter nor leave then you call it as closed pneumothorax but if it can enter and not leave and not leave then it is called as tension pneumothorax now let us see what happens with this tension pneumothorax 
the first thing that happens with the tension pneumothorax is that as air fills here, the, the lung collapses, the respiratory sounds disappear and there is a resonant note on percussion. The second thing is that the trachea and the heart shifts to the opposite side. The breath sounds become absent. Now this lung has collapsed, the trachea has shifted to the opposite side, the apex beat has shifted to the opposite side and the lung has collapsed. Now what happens that in a collapsed lung, supposing this is the lung and this is the collapsed lung. This collapsed lung will start behaving like an embo bag for the normal lung. So what will happen that in inspiration air will move from this lung to this lung. And very little air will come from outside. Same way in expiration the lung, the air will move from this lung to this lung. And very little air will really go out. Therefore, there is this is called as the Ambu bag phenomenon. You must have seen the Ambu bag, which the anesthetists operate. Okay, so this leads to failure of ventilation. The second thing that happens is that the the whole of the blood from the right side of the heart from the right side of the heart, this is the pulmonary heart. All of the blood goes through the collapsed lung, goes through the collapsed lung and back without getting oxygenated, back into the heart, without getting oxygenated because in the collapsed lung there is no air. Whereas very little blood actually gets into the aerated lung and gets a little bit oxygenated, gets a little bit oxygenated and goes back to the heart. So this is called as that in the collapsed lung there is perfusion but no ventilation. In the affect in the normal lung, there is ventilation, but no perfusion. This is called as perfusion, ventilation, dissociation. Therefore, there is no exchange between blood and air because they are never in contact of each other. Where there is blood, there is no air. Where there is air, there is no blood. So because of this perfusion, ventilation, dissociation and because of the Ambu back phenomenon, both perfusion suffers and ventilation suffers and because of the, con the collapsed lung, there can be a severe respiratory failure. Therefore, what you should do? You should do intermittent positive pressure respiration to prevent the collapse and you should do drain the pleural cavity by intercostal drainage intercostal drainage and this is a negative pressure drainage because you want to maintain negative pressure in the pleural cavity so this is a negative negative pressure pressure drainage okay now let us see let us go still outside to find out the reason of breathlessness and that is the rib. Now what has happened is that this portion of the rib has fractured and this is the trachea, this is the bronchus, this is the lung. So let us see what is happening in inspiration. In inspiration, 
the rest of the chest wall is moving out but this fragment is moving in and because of this uncooperative fragment there is less negative pressure in the affected side as compared to the opposite side because this is normal so there is more negative pressure here less negative pressure here and therefore the air moves from the affected lung to the normal lung now what happens in expiration in expiration we again draw the same diagram the trachea the bronchus the lungs this is the normal side this is the affected side this fragment the rest of the fragments are moving in this fragment is moving out therefore there is more positive pressure less positive pressure here as compared to here therefore the air is moving from the normal side to the affected side all the time in inspiration air is moving like this and in expiration it is moving like this this is called as pendular air movement it is also called as pendi luft it was described by germans it is called as pendi luft therefore <coughs> there is severe problem with ventilation air is moving from this side to this side across this carina this is the terminal cartilage of the trachea in inspiration from affected to normal in expiration from normal to affected and very little air is coming from outside therefore because of the ventilatory failure because of the slail chest fragment because of its paradoxical movement with the rest of the chest wall you have a ventilatory failure and severe respiratory problem can be dealt with by intermittent positive pressure respiration that means you push in air from here and by stabilization of the slail fragment by fixing the ribs which are fractured at its two sides a rib must be fractured must have a double fracture to become flail so this these are the reasons if if the person is having breathlessness you must think of respiratory tract obstruction and you must clear it by endotracheal suction you must think of peribronchial emphysema you may diagnose it by a plain chest x ray and see the suprasternal space of burn for crepitations and you may drain it by a negative negative pressure suction then you must look for a lacerated or a shocked lung as as in submariners and you have to treat it by anti inflammatory steroids and ventilatory support then you must look for intra pleural space occupying lesion and you must manage it by intermittent positive pressure respiration and intercostal drainage and you must look at a flail chest fragment and you must stabilize the flail fragment either by open reduction internal fixation of the rib or by a towel clip traction and you must manage the emergency by intermittent positive pressure respiration now supposing the person comes in shock the two reasons of shock are hemorrhage or cardiac tamponade in this the intravenous pressure will decrease and in this cardiac tamponade the intravenous or jugular venous pressure will increase this has to be dealt with by drainage of the pericardium
and hemostasis. And this of course has to be dealt with like hypovolumic shock by replacing blood with blood. The third problem with chest injuries can be visceral injury. The heart, the lung, the esophagus in the chest, but liver and spleen in the abdomen and in between the diaphragm can get injured. You have to diagnose and manage the visceral injuries in severe chest injuries. So this finishes our approach to a case of chest injury. Thank you.